All right, so this is the second type of projectile motion problem that we're going to be handling in class, and this is called a ground-to-ground -ground problem. And essentially what we remember here is that the, there's no change in height. It basically starts and finishes at the same vertical position. All right, so this one uh, is going to start out. So we have a student on the zero-meter line of a metric football field. Yes, there is a metric football field. I just made it up and kicks a football at this angle. And this has the initial velocity of 25 meters per second. And then you're going to find the various things that are listed here. So first thing I want to do is capture the information that I have. So I'm going to first draw my initial velocity vector. And this is going to have a speed of 25 meters per second. And my angle is going to be 53. And this thing is going to follow a parabolic trajectory, just to, so that I can visualize what's going on here. And I'm going to draw this part here. This is going to be my range. And then this would be a maximum height that it achieves. And then the first thing I really want to do when I'm dealing with these problems is to break this initial launch velocity, which is our v naught, into its x and y components. So v naught x is going to be equal to the 25 times the cosine of 53 degrees. And make sure you're in degrees and not radians. And that is equal to about 15 meters per second. So v naught y is equal to 25 times the sine of 53 degrees. And that, if you plug that into your calculator, you should get 20 meters per second. So if you're kind of troubling with degrees and radians, just double check the numbers there. And the second thing we want to do is we want to capture this information in the horizontal and vertical t-chart that we had done for horizontally launched projectiles and list out what do we know. So in the horizontal direction, I know that v naught x is equal to 15 meters per second. I know the initial velocity in the y direction, and that is equal to 20 meters per second. I okay, so... Um, the initial velocity in the y direction was 20 meters per second. I also know that my acceleration in the y direction is going to be equal to minus g or minus 10 meters per second squared. I know that my change in vertical position is going to be equal to zero over the entire length of it. And then there's some also other things that we know that are specific to what happens at the top. I know that my velocity in the y direction at the top is going to be equal to zero, and that might be useful. And I also know that my final y velocity, because of the symmetry, because of the fact that it accelerates upward at the same rate that it accelerates downward, my final velocity when it hits the ground is going to be minus 20 meters per second. So we kind of know a lot of information. Um, really, this is the only one that's kind of given. The rest of it is all stuff you have to have an intuition about in setting up the problem. So that's, again, for for ground to ground problems, I think it really helps to kind of list out what you know in the horizontal and vertical directions. All right. All right, so let's do the time the ball is in the air. So I want to find time is my question mark. And again, my projectile is doing this thing. I can take advantage of symmetry and figure out the time to the top and just double it. Or I can use the fact that I know the final y velocity here and I know the initial y velocity here and just use that equation. Um, if I set up my velocity equations, because I know my velocities, I don't know the time, I know, but I do know my acceleration and I can solve for time pretty easily. So my final velocity was minus 20 in the y direction. My initial velocity was plus 20 and then minus 10 times t. So plugging that all in, I get the time as four seconds. So that is the total time to start to finish. All right, so how far away does the ball land? This is asking me for what my change in position is in the x direction. And if I look at my formulas, I know that my change in position is equal to my horizontal component of my velocity times the time that it's in the air. Remember, the time it takes to go horizontally is the same time it takes to go up and down. It's the link. And we know that from the previous part, part that t was equal to four seconds for the total trajectory. So plugging numbers in, I have 15 meters per second is my x component of the velocity times the four seconds. 15 times four is going to give me 60 meters. So now I have solved for how far away the ball lands.
All right, so now we're looking for the highest height the ball reaches. So again, I am looking for this right here, the change in Y value there. So here I have some options. So what happens at this highest height? I, I know that if it takes four seconds to do everything, because of symmetry, it's only going to take two seconds to get to the top. So I can use the fact that I use a little bit of scientific reasoning here. Um, to figure out the time it takes to get to the top. And I can use this equation, v not y, because I know that, times t minus 1 half gt squared. I can plug that in, all the numbers, and set that up. And I solve for delta y, and that is equal to 20 times the 2 seconds minus 1 half times 10 times 2 squared. And I can take that math through there, and it will get a change in y of 20 meters. Or we could actually use our v-squared equation and not even put time in there because maybe I don't really want to reason that out. But our v-squared equation also is a component equation. It doesn't come up a tremendous amount, but you can use it. And I can plug it in this way, 2g change in y. So my final velocity at the top is going to be equal to 0. My initial velocity is the 20 squared minus 2 times 10 times the change in height, which is what I'm telling you starting to solve for, and we get the same answer. So you have some options here, um, figuring out uh, the highest height when you have a ground-to-ground -ground type problem. All right, so same drill as the horizontally launched projectiles. I want you to do those graphs on your own. So where it says sketch the graphs, on, pa on page, I forget, six or seven this is, um, put those in there. The scaling, um, just keep the scaling there and you have horizontal and vertical. So fill in the graphs and we'll check them when we get back together again. So uh, important points that I want you to remember um, that if we look at a ground to ground problem, the initial vertical velocity is equal to the, the negative of the final vertical velocity because it has this symmetry. So remember and watch out for the sign change because one is going up and one is going down, but we can kind of take advantage of the symmetry of the problem because it accelerates up at the same rate that it accelerates down and it covers the same vertical distance up as the same vertical distance down. So that's kind of an important thing that you can possibly use when you're doing some problem solving. Um, and you can use this uh, fact to solve for the time in the air by using this equation and this will give you the total time in the air. So again, kind of remember this idea of um, the height up is the same height down, acceleration is the same, and take advantage of the symmetry of the situation. So just kind of some important things to remember when you're doing ground-to-ground -ground problems. So you are now ready to do the next set of web assigned problems, but I've asked you to do six and, ten, six and seven for sure for tomorrow, at least try them so that we can deal with any questions.